I'm going to take a lure that I've already made. Remember these? These are the squid jigs that I made from a pen top or a couple of pen tops. I'm not a big fan of making lures that are kind of novelty lures. Those things actually work. They catch fish, but I want to make them out of soft plastic. So that means a mold. So that means a master. So that means we got to go to the lathe and lathe one up. Okay, so before we can go out there to the lathe, we need to have a design. So let's go ahead and just do a quick sketch. Make it kind of a simple torpedo shape. The eye will be here somewhere. It'll have a wire going through it eventually and the tentacles coming out this side. So I do want a little step down right here because I'm going to have the wire and the bundle of sort of tentacles just coming out right there. And for the mold, I want to be able to have all that positioned. And so the mold will have a place for the internal guts of this thing to set in it while I pour the soft plastic on it. So as far as dimensions go, I want the full length to be two and a quarter inches with this part being about a quarter inch. Then I want the fattest part to be right at five eighths of an inch. So let's go ahead and go out to the lathe. All right, I've got a piece of wood on the lathe. It's kind of a weird piece of wood. Uh, it's something I pulled off one of my trees. All right, so here's the piece of wood. This is cut from a branch, but it has a really tight, tight grain. It's dense, it's heavy, and it's harder than heck. And you would not believe it because uh, I can cut a pretty good sized branch with just loppers and the branches tend to be pretty soft. They sort of sag. So I researched the wood a little bit and it's a Chinese tree. And traditionally this wood was used to make uh, samurai practice swords. Those wooden long uh, elegant looking swords. Uh, and they, they use it because it's so hard and dense and you really just can't snap these things. Now all that really doesn't have much value in making this. But I thought I'd share the information in case you ever come across Lumquat. You can hear how hard it is. So the first thing I want to do is true this up so it's nice and round. See how tight that grain is. It's uh, really hard to even sink your fingernail in it. I think it's going to make a, a really nice master. So let's go ahead and keep carving. All right. So this is a different one as you might notice uh, the original one made out of that lumquat wood kind of blew up on me so I had to abandon that unfortunately because it is so smooth it's amazing but uh, I really actually like this shape a little better and so I'm gonna take it down just a little more and I'm gonna take it off there and I'll show you where I'm gonna put the eyes and I'm also gonna put some uh, little fins on it all right I'm gonna mark where I'm going to put the little wings so I have to be 180 degrees apart and and I'll just go ahead and index it with this little dot and just mark my spot my spot here I'm going to go all the way across and I'll mark the eye too then I'll go 180 do the same thing that should do it and now I just need to put a, a little x where I want the eyes and I'll just run a a line all the way around. All right, now I just got to cut it here and finish off sanding. So I found this plastic. It's nice because it's just about the right thickness and I can cut it pretty easily with a razor knife. 
Okay, I ended up making templates out of this foil and then I put it on the plastic and cut it out. I refined it a little bit with the Dremel and now I'm ready to put it on there. So I'm going to go ahead and use this UV uh, resin as glue. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let me get the bead on this one and we'll get a clear coat on these guys. All right, I've got one coat of primer on there and while this dries, I'm gonna hang it right here to dry. So while that dries, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare the clay bed so I can start with the mold. Okay, I just got it out of the uh, UV chamber and it's set up. The finish isn't perfect, but it's plenty good for a soft plastic mold. So this thing is going to have to go up against this backstop and then I'll have to get it shoved down in there right along uh, the halfway mark. I do want to have the little wings all the way down in this clay. I always find I have to cut out a lot more clay than I imagined I would. I don't know why. I don't know if I can't really visualize it, but. I'm getting real close. Now I just need to fill in all these uh, edges to make sure everything's up against the, the little lure. All right, so it's all set. The bed is all laid out nice and smooth. I got nice connections on the lure. I made a little uh, pouring sprue and then I made little vents out of uh, some lead solder, or actually lead free solder. Now I'm just gonna build the walls up high enough so I get at least uh, three-eighths of an inch over the body okay I've calculated the volume it is 89 milliliters okay what a mess uh, my my container broke I got silicone jizz all over me holy crud my oh man my container totally cracked on the bottom and leaked Well, I managed to salvage oh, probably about two-thirds of it. Plus, there's silicone on everything, man. My hands, the whole place has got droops and droobs. Ugh. All right. Whew. Back to pouring a mold. Knock a little of the air out, and I'm going to set it nice and level, and then I'm going to leave it overnight. What a mess. Oh, what a mess. What to do with this? It's the next day this is set up pretty good but it took me an hour or more to recover from that spill and I realized right after I poured this that I had forgotten to put in the little set keys the alignment keys on the clay so those little those little indentures uh, <laughs> and so I'm gonna have to figure out a way to do it now all right let's pull this off looks good so it looks good at the interface uh, where the clay was I don't see a, uh, a lot of bubbles or anything so I think we're gonna be pretty good I'm gonna have to uh, build up the sprue again on this side and then I gotta figure out how to put little holes in this uh, silicone I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that okay I've uh, come up with a pretty good way to make these alignment little keyholes uh, so that the two halves align when you put them on there and they stay aligned. Uh, and a, I'm just pulling a plug out from uh, various locations. So I've taken 
uh, an aluminum tube and sharpen the inside of it. And then I'm just slowly cutting in. And as, as you get deeper, if you hold it at about uh, 3 eighths of an inch deep in there, it just shears off the silicone and you end up with a nice hole. So now I'm just going to build up this sprue. I'll clean it up a little bit. And then I'll Vaseline all the silicone and we'll pour the second half. Hopefully it'll come out good. All right, that should do it now. It's time to pour the rest of the silicone. All right, hopefully the bubbles will come out. It's level and we just need to wait. Okay, so it's a day and a half later. Uh, I'm still wiping up spilled silicone everywhere. There's little dollops everywhere on the camera, on the floor. My wife's mad at me because now the bamboo floor in the house is slippery because I guess I tracked it in. It's slippery in here. My hands wouldn't soap up. That said, we've got our uh, mold ready to go. Hopefully it'll all be worth it if I've got a nice clean mold in here and we can make some squid uh, in the next few minutes. See what it looks like on the inside. Hopefully it'll separate cleanly. It looks like it will. A couple little spots. All right. It looks pretty good actually. I'm surprised. Uh, not too bad. I got a little cleaning up to do. So now I've got to create the same kind of wire I created for these uh, with these, you know, the, the little tentacles coming off the back and whatever kind of flash I want on it. And of course, a hook. So let's get started on that. So this is going to be my internal wire. and It's very, very, pretty much the same thing as this wire. Uh, I'll have to shorten it quite a bit uh, and it'll, there'll be an eye that I'll form right there. But before I actually make this eye, I've got to have a weight in here. All right, so this is going to have to go in here, but I'll probably have to glue it in place so that it doesn't move all the way to the head because I need to have a little bit of rubber around it. So we'll glue it in place right about there. Okay, so I'm first going to go with uh, just a standard uh, sort of bass jig skirt, and I'm just going to run it over the hook and up onto this twist. And I'm going to put this stuff on there, uh, and it should be just right. Not a whole lot, but that should do it. And if it isn't completely obvious to you guys, I'm making this up as I go along. <laughs> I kind of got an idea of what I want and how I want it to look. Uh, but mostly, it's uh, creativity on the fly here. All right, so key here is to get all these fibers back and sort of shove them in here so everything falls in place where it's supposed to be. And we can close this bad boy up. But I'm going to put it in the vise. I think that'll work perfect. Just got to be real careful not to over tighten this. So let's melt some plastic. All right, I've got the extractor fan going. Uh, and I also have the um, injector in there getting good and hot. I'm going to have to very rapidly go over to the paint booth, suck the uh, stuff into the injector, come over here and uh, squirt it in. So I guess I'll set the camera up right here. All right, let's give it a shot. See how it turned out. I'm hopeful. 
but you never really know till you open it. Oh, that looks pretty good. Even before I pull it out of there, it's looking pretty good. All right, look at that. That looks fantastic. It needs to cool just a little more. So from this very humble little uh, pen top squid to this, pretty big difference. Pretty happy with it. It looks really, really nice. It's got a couple little details I could probably improve. This one is going to catch fish. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. I'll see you then.